This is the Sports Desk on Sin 90.7 and we are joined by a very special guest. We have Amy Jackson from the Melbourne City women's team on the phone. How are you, Jay- um, Amy? Good morning, guys. I'm great, thanks. How are you guys? Good. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this is Mel here. Um, I guess straight off the top, let's uh, chat about the new CBA. Um, you must be stoked. Yeah, look, I think it's a, um, a positive step for women's football in general. And, um, yeah, it's only going to help with the growth of the game and participation rates. And, yeah, it's going to become um, a more professional league here in Australia. Yeah, absolutely. And um, do you think that uh, this is we're going to see... I mean, it's a pretty obvious answer to this question, I think, but are you, do you think this will see more talent hang around in, you know, the soccer... Um, football field um, young girls rather than you know potentially crossing over to um, AFL at a younger age I know you um, played AFL until you were about 12 and couldn't play there anymore but now we've seen that pathway change but do you think this will uh, help retain some young girls in soccer? Yeah definitely look I think it allows us to compete with the other codes now um, on a much higher level um, our minimum wage and our conditions now are actually at the top of the, the game and I think that will help us retain our best players. Um, we've lost a few from, um, to other sports in the past but now there's no excuse. We've, we've got the conditions that we're after. And in saying that, sort of with you know, retaining girls and all that kind of thing, do you think this is also a, a, like a case of you know, like rising tide lifts all both boats in terms of like the success of women's sport across the board has sort of gotten like football... Australia to sort of step up their game with the women's soccer players? Yeah, look, I think it has. And look, um, women's football, we've been around for years and it's, I think, with the other sports coming in, it's just, um, it's helped FFA to, to realise that we will lose players if we don't look after them correctly. And I think this has demonstrated um, with, like, with the, the new CBA, um, it's demonstrated the new professionalism within the women's game. Yeah, Absolutely. Amy, Haran here, uh, switching gears, like with, with the start of the season coming up, how do you feel about so straight off the bat playing against Perth after after a final last season? Yeah, huge match. Yeah, it is a big one. But you know what, it's always good to test yourself against one of the best teams in the beginning. And I think with the pre-season training that we're doing at the moment, I think we'll be in, um, in great condition to... Uh, yeah, to compete on at a very high level with Perth, and I'm sure that they'll they'll be thinking the same thing. So it'll be set to be a really really good game. And obviously, Perth has one of the best players in the world at the moment, Sam Kerr. How do you feel about coming up against her? Look, she's an exceptional player, and I think she deserves all the accolades that she's been um, receiving over the last 12 months. Um, and you know what? I think yet again, it's just fantastic for the league that we've got such high quality players playing within our country um, because then it helps raise the level of everybody around them. Mm. And sort of, sorry, back to this sort of like CBA thing and that point that you've just raised, do you think we'll see more players like Sam Kerr coming through and being able to develop better as well? Yeah, look, I think it's going to help grow the the strength of the game but also the numbers of the game so younger girls now and the next generation of female footballers can harbour those hopes of becoming a full-time professional within their own country um, I know in the past it's been um, difficult in terms of finding locations to actually um, get the best out of yourself so a lot of players have gone overseas but if we can establish that environment here in Australia where you can still be surrounded by your family and your friends and your support networks I think it's only going to be beneficial for the game. Yeah, and obviously draw players from overseas here as well. That would be pretty awesome. Like more players from overseas here as well. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, pretty cool. definitely. We have a, a lot of um, US players come over because the leagues coincide. So over in the States, the league is on now. And then during their break, which is actually our main season, it allows them to come over. And I think overall that's really helped develop the quality and increase the... Um, the standard as well. For yourself, um, sorry, I'm not really giving anyone else a chance to talk here, but um, <laughs> for yourself, um, was there ever a point where you felt like you needed to give up soccer to sort of pursue other avenues in your life? Yeah, look, for me, it's always been a bit of a balancing act. Um, I've always studied and worked and played soccer, mm-hmm. and 
it got to the point where it was too much. And so I stepped away for a little bit and then realised actually I'm missing out on, on my passion because it's something that I, I really enjoy doing. I just had to spin all, all of the external things back and just f- uh, fully focus on football. But now that oh, with the CBA and just other opportunities that have come up because of the game, it's allowed me to, to solely focus on that. And I'll be, I'm very grateful for that. Mm. But on the flip side of it, I, I'm very glad I've got my education behind me and my working um, experience as well so that I know after my time in football is finished, I've got other avenues to explore. But, yeah, look, it, it, it's, been, it's been tough, and that's not only for me. There's, this has been going on for, for decades, and I look at um, some of our ex-national team players and the way that they... Um, just got on with things and, and still achieved so much. I, I really respect that, and that's what it is. It's I think we sometimes forget to look at the conditions that the people in the past had, mm-hmm. and so you have to be very grateful just for the the small changes that are being made these days. It's tough though. The conditions aren't aren't simple. And we were chatting just before uh, you joined us, Amy, about the average retirement age for female soccer players in this country. It's down near 25. And I found that really shocking and disheartening. Yeah, it is. And to be fair, a lot of athletes don't peak until about 27, 28. Exactly years right. Old, That's so what we were saying. You're not even there yet. No, and it, it is. It's it's sad, um, but it's the reality also. And like I said, I've been in that situation too, where you sort of question things at times, but then when the little moments happen, or if you do something that fully satisfies you in the game, you're like, this is why I do it. Mm. So it's always mm. those. It's not always a monetary reward that you do things mm. for, um, but it's also about the survival. So it's just having that balance too. And it's awesome to see this new CBA come into place because that's only going to make all of these things uh, happen less and all yeah. of that exciting stuff happen more. So it's it's great to see and it's great for everyone and everyone that's a fan of uh, female sport. Yeah, definitely. And also for fans of female sport, you can see more games on Fox Sports now, which is pretty awesome. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. So we play a lot of double headers this season. Mm. So we play before the men, um, and we're on a world class um, pitch, being Amy Park. Mm. And I think all of those little things are just helping to to raise the profile of the women's women's game. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. That visibility is so important. Like, I know even with the AFLW, there was a lot of that whole "you can't be what you can't see," which I think is a really nice saying mm. for these sorts of moments in women's sport. Yeah, look, it really just puts things into perspective and, and it's great that um, I think AFLW has, has been a success and, and now W League is, is also in the spotlight and, and I think it'll just help improve the, the participation rates and just females in general just mm-hmm. getting involved in sport. Before we touch on like the, the next season of W League, just want to ask, what do you think of all of this competition? You have cricket, soccer, football, mm. now basketball, and then netball starting in like Feb next year. What do you make of all of that competition between these sports in summer? The codes, yeah. Look, I'm an avid sports fan, so for me, as long as, as, long as people are participating, okay. I'm happy. Mm. And um, I think just the, the fact that the conditions have improved so much, it, it's not... It's not about competition. It's about being fulfilled, and I think us as females are we're actually getting some recognition, and we're able to make a living out of what we love doing, and that's the the most important thing. Mm. Yeah. And it's awesome that there is so much opportunity. You just reeled off a heap on that list, Lucy. That's yeah. it's awesome that that's the that's a problem that we're chatting about. It's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah. Who knew that too much women's sport was going to be a problem? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great problem. <laughs> A yeah. great problem to have. Yeah. And with this upcoming season, um, you guys are obviously defending a grand final uh, title. Do you guys hope to go... Is it back-to-back-to-back to back to back this season? Yeah, so we've we've won the last two. Yeah. Um, and we're definitely looking for a third. And, you know, with that new coaching staff, we're, we're, being, <laughs> we're being prepped to actually win that third title. Um, yeah. It's nothing but hard work. And, look, we're, we're ready for that. And... We really want to take out this. We have high expectations, not only of ourselves, but of our teammates too. Back to back to back to back to back to back. back has to a very back. nice ring to it. Yeah, Lots it of all the backs. <laughs> <laughs> back to back cubed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you so much for talking to us this morning, Amy. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, good luck in your NPL final this weekend on Saturday. Who are you playing? I didn't catch that from you. 
Thank you very much. I play for Alamein and we're playing against Shaw's Galaxy at 4pm. Oh, awesome. awesome. Can you stream that game? Uh, yes, it should be. I think it's... I think it's on the FA, on the MPLW Facebook page. Awesome. We will check that out. I definitely will watch that. Thanks so much for joining us though, Amy, and chatting through some super awesome. exciting for times for uh, female soccer. Really appreciate your time. Um, we're going to quickly go to a song on the sports desk. This is the XX with On Hold.